Okay, so we've been proving a ton of results about polynomial rings over fields, and we've got one more that we want to prove before we do some examples of constructing new fields out of these polynomial rings over fields. And that is um, this result about ideals of polynomial rings over fields. So let's just recall this division algorithm, which is going to be a really important tool in this proof. So let's say we've got k as a field, and then the division algorithm says that for all polynomials f of x and g of x in k adjoin x, there exist unique q of x and r of x such that f of x equals g of x times q of x plus r of x. Okay, and we have this requirement on the size of the degree. So the degree of the remainder is either zero up to the degree of g of x, but not equal to g, the degree of g of x. So compare that to the division algorithm with integers, and I think you see a nice parallel. Okay, so the proposition we want to prove is essentially that k of x is something called a principal ideal domain. In other words, every ideal in k adjoin x is a principal ideal. So let's just point that out. k of x is a PID. Okay, so uh, coming up right after this on the channel, uh, we're going to have a little section on unique factorization domains, fields of fractions, and principal ideal domains, and so uh, take a look for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this proof goes. And if you remember the proof that the integers is a PID, in other words, every ideal inside the integers is principal, um, this proof goes in a very, very um, parallel way to that. And that just furthers the similarities of the integers with um, polynomials over a field. Okay, so let's go ahead and suppose that I contained in K adjoint X is an ideal. And so if we want to show that it's a principal ideal, then we um, better find an element that creates the whole thing. Okay, so let's uh, take um, P of X inside of I such that P of X has two properties. So first of all, P of X is monic. So notice since we're in a field, we can always choose a monic polynomial just by multiplying by the inverse of uh, the leading term. And the second thing we want to satisfy is the degree of P of X is minimal over all polynomials of positive degree. In other words, um, not counting the constant polynomials. So we look at all of the polynomials in I, so we look at every one of them, and we find the polynomial of smallest degree that is not a constant polynomial, and then we choose a monic one of those, and we can take that to be P of X. Okay, so hopefully P of X will generate the whole ideal and let's see why that will be the case. So let's go ahead and suppose that F of X is inside of I, okay? So what, uh, and then the next thing is we wanna do the division algorithm with F of X and P of X. So what that's gonna allow us to do is to write F of X equals p of x times q of x plus r of x, and then we know something about the degree of r of x. So the degree of r of x is bigger than or equal to zero and strictly less than the degree of p of x. Okay, so the next thing that we want to notice is that um, this implies that the degree of r of x is actually equal to zero. Because if it's not equal to zero, then that violates the minimality of the degree of P of X. So let's just write that by the minimality of the degree of P of X. Remember the degree of P of X was minimal over all polynomials with positive degree. So if R of X has a positive degree, then that would violate that. So we have the degree of R of X equals zero. So we have two cases here. 
So case number one is that R of X is zero, the zero polynomial. And in this case, we're done because this immediately implies that F of X is inside the principal ideal generated by P of X which tells us that since f of x was chosen arbitrarily, that i is contained within the principal ideal generated by p of x. But since p of x is in i, we immediately know that that principal ideal is a sub-ideal of i. So uh, then case number two will be if r of x is a number which is not zero. So let's look at that. So case number two, p of x equals alpha, which is not equal to zero inside of the field. But then recall, since k is a field, alpha is a unit. But then if you have a unit inside of the ideal, the whole ring is inside of the ideal. In other words, the ideal is equal to the ring itself. So that means the principal ideal generated by p of x equals the principal ideal generated by alpha equals the whole ring, which is k adjoin x. But again, by this, since the principal ideal generated by p of x is contained in i, that tells us that i equals uh, k of x itself anyway. So this case number two is not so interesting, but it does show that i is a principal ideal still. Um, okay, good. So that finishes this proof. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board and we're going to look at a case where we have a polynomial over not a uh, field and we'll see that we do not have a principal ideal domain. So we just showed that k adjoin x, where k is any field, is something called a principal ideal domain. In other words, every ideal is a principal ideal generated by a single element. Now we want to show a non-example of that if we don't have a field. And in fact, we don't have to go too far. Z adjoin x, in other words, polynomials with coefficients in the integers, this is not a principal ideal domain. In other words, we can find an ideal which is not principal. And the example that we'll use here is this ideal i, which is generated by x and the number 2. So, in other words, this is equal to all polynomials of this form. So, a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to a 1 x plus 2 times a 0. Notice every constant element here will be even, and that's because it's generated by this element 2. Okay, good. And then here we have these a i's are in the integers. So now let's go ahead and show that this is not a principal ideal by trying to show that it is a principal ideal. So let's suppose that p of x is inside of z adjoin x with um, p of x equals this ideal i, which we'll call that's generated by x and 2. But notice that tells us that 2 is in the ideal generated by p. But what that tells us is that 2 equals p of x times f of x for some f of x in z adjoin x. But since the degree of the left-hand side equals the degree of the right-hand side, we know that the degree of p of x has to be the same thing as the degree of f of x, which has to be zero. In other words, p and f are both constant polynomials. What this tells us is that p of x is either the constant polynomial one or p of x is the constant polynomial two. Okay, good, but we know that it's not the constant polynomial one because if it were the constant polynomial one, we would have i being the whole ideal, but that's a contradiction. So it's not the constant polynomial of one, but that means it is the constant polynomial of two. But let's see where that gets us. So we have i is just generated by two, but now notice, that implies that x is a multiple of 2, but we know that x is not a multiple of 2, so x is not an element of from i. But up here we have that x is one of the generators of i. So we've come to an impasse, and that is our contradiction.
So in other words, um, this ideal is not principal. So we found an example of an ideal in z adjoint x which is not a principal ideal. Okay, we're done.